just want to welcome everybody to Rose Kadesh. Uh, we're entering into our 11th month. And uh, so prayerfully, you know, as each one of these months, you know, usually around 29, 30 days, 31 days, I think they're two. But I mean, everything is just really just flying by. And uh, so hopefully y'all, everybody had a great 10th month, and now I'm looking for an awesome 11th month. Amen. So so if you have some scriptures, then we'll get started with our little... Hey, very good. I will read uh, the usual patterns from First Chronicles 23, 30, and 31. They are to stand every morning to thank and to praise Yahweh, and likewise at evening, and to offer all burnt offerings to Yahweh on the Sabbaths, on new moons, Rosh Chodesh, and the fixed festivals, and the number set by the ordinance concerning them continually before Yahweh. And then we'll read a pattern from Ezekiel 46, 1 through 3. Thus says Yahweh Elohim, the gate of the inner court facing east shall be shut the six working days, but it shall be opened on the Sabbath day and opened on the day of Rosh Chodesh. The prince shall enter by way of the porch of the gate from outside and stand by the post of the gate. Then the princes shall provide his birth offering and his peace offerings and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate and then go out. But the gate shall not be shut until the evening. The people of the land shall also worship at the doorway of that gate before Yahweh on the Sabbaths and on Rosh Kodesh. Amen. So what I wrote up here is for this month, I just wanted us to, I just wanted to play with something. And I wrote here, what does unity, I mean, I'm sorry, what does dwelling in unity look like? What does dwelling in unity look like? So what I did was, you see the table, you know I got a prop. I hope this works. <laughs> you know, you never know. So I have a, uh, what do you call this thing? A, 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 a carafe, a carafe, a carafe, pitcher, a, a bottle <laughs> for rednecks. Okay, so, fly, okay. So what I wanted to do was, is in, and in here is water. This is water. It's not moonshine, okay? So y'all don't rush up here and grab this So uh, for our Kentucky folk. So anyway, so this is water. This is water. So this is going to represent the very body of Messiah. All right, and then there's water in it. So, Tammy, would you hand me the olive oil? So... I'm going to pour this in here. What's going to happen? It's mixing. I sure is some good olive oil you pouring in there. <laughs> I know, right? Everybody's like, man, there goes $20 down. And you, see, you see all the Jews in here. <laughs> They're worried about the money. Yes, I'm done with that. Is this not amazing? But how many times in Scripture do we see the word oil used, and how many times do we see the word water used? A lot. Probably 200 and something times. And a lot of times it's, it's in a positive, it's in a positive light. So this is what, this is in this container, this is what unity looks like. Sometimes this is what the body of Messiah looks like. This looks like that they don't agree. But yet, what they're doing is, you said this many times, Tam, is whenever he created the heavens and the earth and he created in the days, he said it was tov. What does tov mean? Not filling its purpose, that it's design in its time. Not that it's just that it's good. So... What I wrote down here was, what does unity look like? People doing what we're designed to do. Whether we're operating in season and out of season, whether we're operating in the oil or we're operating in the water side. It's not one or the other, it's both. And what we have to do is, is we have to, as the body of Messiah, not to sit here and say, I'm oil, water, I don't need you, or vice versa. And sometimes this is what happens in the body of Messiah. We look at this as division rather than as a positive, knowing that each one is doing what it's designed to do. And so you don't see the oil fighting to do what water does. 
And you don't see the water fighting to do what the oil does. You see people in their callings running in their lanes. So what does unity look like? That's what really it looks like in the body of Messiah. But do it, it's tov, doing what it's designed to do. Not pointing the finger at the other that you're not like me. That's not what it's supposed to do. So, so I was just playing with this because of the 11th month. And so Deuteronomy chapter 1, 1, 2, and 3. It says, These are the words of Moshe. He spoke to all of Israel beyond the Jordan in the wilderness at the Arabah, opposite of Suf, between Paran and Tophin, Laban, as at Hatzeroth, and Dezahab. That's about the best you're going to get from me. <laughs> and it says, It is 11 days' journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. And it says, Now in the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, Moshe spoke to the people of Israel according to all that Yahweh had given him in commandments to them. So what I always like to do is, is I like to grab, since we're in this 11th month, what was really going on in an 11th month back then? And so this is a very important time to where they're getting ready to go into the promised land. So he's just not saying, okay, you already know the Torah. No, we're going to reread the Torah. We're going to go through and we're going to go piece by piece and we're going to read it in your hearing because this is your light. This is your lamp. This is your law. This is your way. This is your life. When you go into the land, this is going to govern you. So I think the Father, we come out of the seventh month. You know, I always was thinking that if you think about it, in the first month of a, of a year, we have Pesach, right? We're at Pesach. What are we doing before we get ready for the 14th? We're getting the sin out. We're, we're examining ourselves, right? And then we have Pesach and unleavened bread. We're, we're getting the sin out. We're going through and looking. We, we know the story. <clears throat> and then a couple of months later, we have Shavuot. And then after that, we have Sukkot. And so you have a first month, a seventh month. And what are we doing at the month of Elul in the sixth month? We're examining our hearts. And we've got 40 days and before... Uh, Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and we're doing this. And I was just really thinking in my mind, since the seventh month, here we are now at the eleventh month, and here we have an example where he's reminding them of the Torah. You see the Father is always reminding us of His laws, His ways, and His commandments. Because we seem to get locked into our everyday mundane and we really seem to forget what he's asking us to do so what i wanted to do was is in this 11th month here he is reminding them of the commandments because without those if you go into the land not knowing what your marching orders are you're done amen you're just done so I'm very thankful that even in here, he's reminding us, because we have Passover coming up. And I do believe this. You don't get ready for Pesach the month before. You know, we're, we're getting ready now that we would have a great, awesome, not just Pesach, unleavened bread, but I'm talking about counting the Omer all the way to Shavuot. We're talking about locking into his ways because that's what governs our lives. All right, Psalms 133. If you have something, jump on in there. Well, I would just like to point out because of uh, some conversation I was having before the service began. Yeah. And this this message in Deuteronomy 1, it's believed to be about a five-week message that Moshe was giving. And it was 37 days roughly before he died uh, that he's given this message. Because you know when you go into Joshua, it's the first month that they're going in. This is the 11th month. So he dies at the, probably toward the end or at on the 12th month, in the 12th month that he died because he died. Then they go into the promised land in the first month. So I just want to kind of do the math here. So about 37 days. And what is a pattern for us is that no matter 
how long he was, 40 years, leading these stubborn, stiff-necked, rebellious people through the wilderness. And he's 120 years old. And we see he gets aggravated at the end and he loses out getting to go in. But he taught them the truth and the Torah till the day he died. He even ended with blessing them. So it's never that we stop sharing the truth. And it's never that we lay down our laurels or that we get complacent the older that we get. We This is a great pattern to show that we still have influence and inspiration that we can give all the way till the end of our life. Amen. Very, amen. Very good. Let's go to Psalms 133. I'm going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Now, I want, I just, did y'all see me shake this dude up? Now, you can sit here and say, well, I, I'm going to separate because I just don't like you. Or you can say, I'm going to separate because I don't want to get in your way. Look how fast this thing separates. I know, and they're all in the vessel. Yeah, however we want to look at that. I just was amazed. I'm up here playing with this stuff like a kid. I'm just amazed at how fast that separates. It's just unbelievable. Okay, verse 1. I know, right? It says, uh, The song of ascent of David. Behold, how good and pleasant is the brothers who do what? Dwell. Dwell in unity. Guys, this is... that Dwelling in unity is where power comes from. People operating in the Ruach, by the Ruach, um, by the Torah, by His laws and commandments. But being in unity doing this is you're a force. I mean, I, for, I, where the Scripture talks about one putting so many to fight, you know, flight and ten and, you know, and so forth. That's amazing. But really, who is it that's putting the enemy to flight? It's Yahweh doing it. But we have to have our mindset. We have to be where we need to be in unity. Then he says this, and I just use these scriptures because of the word oil and, and the word dew or water. It said, it is like precious oil on his head running down on the beard, on the beard of who? Aaron. That's right, Aaron. Who was what? The high priest. Who is our high priest now? Yeshua, in the order of Melchizedek, running down on the collar of his robe. There's so much teaching in this. And then it says, now we're talking about... Brothers dwelling in unity, okay? This is what he's saying. Brothers, when we're dwelling in unity, this is what it's like. The precious oil running down. And also, just like the dew, what is dew? Water of Hermon, which falls from the mountain of Zion. It says, for there Yahweh has commanded the blessings and life evermore. So we see here where water and oil is tied together to bring forth blessings and life. This looks like division. It is not division. It is designed in its purpose to bring blessings and life and salvation forevermore. So what I did here on the board, I just played with some things <coughs> with these oils. Because I'm not going to do a two-day teaching, I hope. So here's the deal. First the natural, then the spiritual. You know, 1 Corinthians, what, 5, 15, whatever. I might have wrote it down. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 46. It talks about first the natural, then the spiritual. So I just threw this up here. Oil, olive oil, that's what this is, that y'all were cringing about that I wasted a lot of. Cooking, but in cooking and baking, what do you get from it? You get nourishment. You know, Arnold's bread. He's got some good heavy bread. That bread's heavy. You eat it. You eat a piece of that, you got all kind of nutrients in there. But that's oil is used in that bread for nourishment. Also, it was used to do what? We talked about that. Lamps or city lights. Remember, we talked about that teaching. Oil was used for lamps. What? Illumination, which is also his presence, speaks of his presence. It's what this oil is used for, especially we know it's in the tabernacle. You know, we, we've seen it used in many places consecrating that's right there's just a lot all right now i just threw in myrrh myrrh and oil when you mix that because myrrh is bitter and they use this it represents suffering and sacrifice you will see this used and there's a meaning behind this frankincense prayer and worship spikenard love and devotion 
cedar wood, purification and cleansing. And then I put down here, oil sets people, objects, and places apart. Did it not? Yes. What did, what, when Samuel found David, what did he do with David? He anointed him what? He didn't pour water on his head. He poured oil on his What was he doing? Setting him apart as king. Even though he just didn't jump up, I'm the king, I'm the king. He didn't jump up and do that. He waited until that time that the anointing, he waited. He didn't just jump in there and I'm going to do that. He just, he waited till the time that the father said it's time. What about Belshazzar? Y'all remember him in scripture? Nebuchadnezzar's boy. And uh, he was drinking. He wasn't drinking olive oil, but he was drinking a lot of wine. And what caused his death? They went and got the, what? The holy vessels that were taken, and they were, they were set apart by oil. They were anointed and set apart for Yahweh's purpose. And he took it, and he celebrated with it, and he, it cost him his life. So you can see the importance that the Father has in using that what He sets aside as holy is, is holy. Amen. Also, places. We know the tabernacle, to me, Zion. You know, Jerusalem. All of these places, His holy city. All of these places. Uh, I know that um, when we was uh, at the Stanford's, uh, some of us were there. And, uh, you know, they put up their little... Uh, mezuzahs and each one of us would anoint one with oil and we would pray over the home that any kind of foul spirit stops at that door and stays out in the yard and if anyone comes in they get saved you know so you can see that there's this this is real life this is not we're not just playing games here that when you're setting things apart we're trusting by faith that Yahweh and he will intervene in our lives in these areas so the next thing, go ahead, babe. Well, too, the uh, oil can represent the Holy Spirit, and the water is the Torah of truth. Were you going to go there? Absolutely. Okay, great. No, go, go. Well, and Yeshua said, you know, that Elohim is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Same Only well. when you see this tariff that you can see spirit and truth in the same bottle as well, doing what it's supposed to do. Amen. Very good. All right, so let's go to John chapter 7, and we're just going to hit something with the water. So, Tam, I'll let you read 37, 38, and 39, but before you do that, what I wanted to do is, is I put on this side of the board, water, uh, purification, renewal. And we put down baptism or mikvah. Also, I thought this was important also. Water also represents power and authority. And I wrote down the Red Sea and also Yeshua gets up and he calms the sea. So you can see where he was, where they thought here they were going to be destroyed. And he saved them. Up here, they probably thought they were going to be destroyed, but he delivered them, but he destroyed the Egyptians. But you can see that water also will represent power and authority. Also in the physical, it quenches the physical and the spiritual thirst. There are scriptures that talk about that. And as Tammy was talking about living water, uh, the Holy Spirit. So these are some of the things. You can see the function that the Father has throughout Scripture. And there's tons of Scripture that deal with water and oil. If we would just look at them, but it, we are to really put ourselves in here. We are to be a nourishment. We're to serve. We're to help. Uh, before Yeshua died, he said, if you see somebody naked, you clothe them. If you see somebody hungry, you feed them. If you, you know, the sick and on and on and on is what we're supposed to do is, is we're supposed to be oil and water and a light and nourishment to a lost and dying world. And we can operate by looking at these different areas. You know, I always say this before she reads this. The uh, gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians. The gifts of the Spirit, I always ask, which one is the greatest gift? 
It's the one needed at the time. I mean, if somebody needs a miracle, you know, to sit there and, and, and to give them a word of knowledge, well, that might be okay, but they need a miracle. If somebody needs, if somebody's, you know, needs healing, they need healing. Whatever we need, uh, if we're praying for discernment to be able, do I buy this house? Do I buy this car? Do I buy this or do I not? Because I don't know. Is it a lemon? Is it a vegetable? You know, is it going to be a car? You know, or is it going to be a fruit when I get through buying this thing? You know, and so we're praying. So we need discernment a lot of times to see exactly what we need. And so the best gift is the best gift at the time. And so, you know, I was thinking about like myrrh and oil. We've been talking about this, uh, this officer that lost his life last week. There's a lot of suffering that's going on in families' lives that, that's been touched by this. And this whole community has been touched by this. But you can see that sometimes there's, there's suffering in their sacrifice. And this police officer, that's what they do. They put their life on the line every day to protect us. So our military does that. So that we can sit here and we can enjoy. Look, we don't have a lot of... Look, the crazy that we got going on in the United States is self-inflicted. It's just, it's just city, people in the city just shoot people in the city. They're gang shooting this one and shooting that one. It's not other countries coming over here doing this we got our own issues and i understand that but the thing is as you can see and i think that you know this place is a mess but we got to understand that the father wants one thing communication which you talked about in the garden with adam he's walking through here he wants he don't want us hiding he wants relationship relationship communication he doesn't want to say hello and we're hiding in the bush because we're not where we're supposed to be spiritually because we just decided we're going to just do something goofy today. And we knew better than to do it. And we, we caused it. And then it's got to take repentance and it's got to take to get back in right relationship. So the Father just wants it. And fasting and prayer is the, is the greatest and best way to be able to continue to have excellent relationship. It just is. But you know what it cost us? It cost us our flesh. And it cost us to be able to give something up to have that communication. But if, it's just like, to me, it's like working out. And I will tell you this, because this is, you know, I was in a period of working out, and I was really doing really well on it. And then all of a sudden, fell off the turnip truck, whatever you want, fell off the canoe or whatever. But, it, well, the thing about it is, is I, I, I don't have that routine right now. I want that routine, but I do know this because I've, I've been in sports all my life. I know that if I start today, I need to continue tomorrow, the next day, because I'm going to be sore as a rising when I first start. And I'm going to be sore, and, and then I'm going to, you know, you're going to say, what's wrong with you? Don't touch me, you know, because it's just the way it is. It, you're older, it's just... Like, man, did I break something or whatever? It's just the way. It, it just takes a minute. So I, did, I know I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm just calculating. Okay, if I start today, can I continue? And you know what? I, no, I got to go here. I got to go there. So I'll start next week. Do you know that that's been a year ago next week? <laughs> it's just, you know, because, hey, we've been wiring some houses. Man, I come out of there wiring them houses. It's like I've been beat. You know, up and down those ladders and this, that, and the other. But, hey, it's just the way it is. And I'm saying, well, I definitely don't feel like working out. That is a workout. It is a workout. It is a great workout. But, I mean, you, you, see, it's just, it's a mind thing. Fasting is no different. Because, you know, well, this is not a good day because, you know what, they're having a party here. It's a birthday party. And we're, this is not a good day. And, you know, the best days to do it is when we have to fast during the sacrifice. It's what it is. But a lot of times... We don't do it. And I'm just as guilty. Amen. Don't you start. So if you would read. Right here. Right here. Uh, John 7, uh, 37, 38. Because this is talking about the last great day. Uh, it's talking about water. Rivers of living water. Amen. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Yeshua stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this 
he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not yet been given, because Yeshua was not yet glorified. Amen. So we see here that even in this time that Yeshua, during this period of time, during the end of the feast, he was talking about the living water. He's talking about he is really the living water. And he's talking about the Ruach that's going to be given. And the Ruach is given for the reason of guiding us in Torah to be able to help us as we continue to read Torah, walk in Torah, We need the Holy Spirit. We need the Ruach to help us rightly divide the word of truth. And this is what's been, it's a process though. It's just, like I've said, if you've been taught wrong, you know wrong. It's just a, it's a process of unlearning and then learning what the Father, and there's still some learning that needs to be done. There's, especially in these end times, because I just, I just have to say that This is just my personal belief in this. The Father will download information when we need it to be able to operate in it. Now, He will talk to His prophets. He will talk to people to help prepare that this is coming to set up, to set the stage. That happens. But it is to get us all on the same page. That's why I believe that Rosh Kadesh is so important. If the body of Messiah could get this, if Hebrew roots could get this, because we're talking about times and seasons, it was important to them because He spoke to us at these times to get us ready for what's going on with this month. And then within this month, we have Sabbaths, we have Shabbats. And then there's some months that we have our annual feast, and we have even from Hanukkah we just came out of, we have Purim that's coming up pretty soon. The stories, like what's going to happen with Purim, the stories of Hadassah, you know, there's some, it, it means something. Her name means something in these stories. Mordecai means something. You know, don't get an attitude and say, well, that wasn't in Leviticus. Get, get over it. You know, it happened way after Leviticus. But these stories teach us something. You know, she's been teaching about the red one. The red one has been trying to take back the birthright from the beginning when he gave it up for some soup. And he's been trying to get it back. And guess what? He's not going to quit until Satan is cast into the lake of fire. Because even whenever the false prophet and the beast, you think that's all hallelujah when they get cast in there. But guess what? Hasatan ain't cast in there yet. But there's going to come a time he's cast in there. But there's going to be a time that even at the end of the millennium, he's going to be loose for a season. For all of those who are born during this millennial kingdom. How all of that works out. I don't know everything. But I just know this. I I can read. But it is amazing to me. As hard as it is for us today, I would think like, if you sit here and say, Well, if Yeshua was, we would all be righteous. No, you wouldn't. Not if Satan's still loosed. Not if Slewfoot's still loosed. Because at the end, whenever he's loosed, he's going to start deceiving people. And Yeshua's been ruling and reigning for right at a thousand years. Does that show? You can. Let me say this. I just want to say this for here. That's how powerful the flesh is. I'm just letting you take. That's the draw. That's the pull of the flesh. Amen. Just to think, just to put it in perspective. Go ahead. Amen. So if we keep on reading in John 7, I stopped at 39, where he said, but this he spoke of the spirit, talking about out of your belly or your heart will flow rivers of living water. Verse 40 said, some of the people, therefore, when they heard these words, we're saying, no, this is because Yeshua was speaking, and this is going to validate the point you just made. Yeshua is speaking. And when they heard these words that Yeshua was saying, they, they said, this certainly is the prophet. And other, because they have Joel 2 in mind. And others were saying, this is the Messiah. Still others were saying, now look, these are all the people he's talking to. They are at the feast. They are at the Feast of Ingathering. 
They are at Sukkot, so they are in gathered when this is going on, because the the next group said, "Surely the Messiah is not going to come from Galilee, is he? Has not the Scripture said that Messiah comes from the descendants of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David was?" So a division occurred in the crowd because of him. So that just validates your point. That's right. That Amen. regardless, it's going to be over him that That's these right. divisions can come. Amen. And it will continue to be so. So for us, for this month, I just wanted to do this little bitty um, prop, if that's what you call it. But I do want us to look that whenever we're reading the Scripture, re reading our Torah portions and our half Torah portions and all that, every time the, wa the word water or oil jumps off the page, I mean, whenever you see it, stop and, and say, what is that? What is it used for? Because a lot of times we get locked into the Torah portions and we just read. And, and we read out of duty. We just do sometimes. We read out of duty. No, the Father wants to talk to us in the Torah portion. He wants to talk to us. If you don't get all of them read, okay. But just, you know, just let him talk to us when we're reading these Torah portions. And so whenever you're seeing, oh, okay, here's oil. Well, all of a sudden, here's frankincense. What is this frankincense about? What's going on in the story with frankincense? What's going on if we see spikenard or cedarwood? And rather just read over it and just, you know, just to do our due diligence. Just to so. Look what it means. If you want to take a picture of this, these things mean something. And they're speaking to us because this is why he's using it. And it's just, it, you know, he, he just uses it in Scripture all the time like that. That's why it's hard for me to read a Torah portion because I think I read three verses and then I'm locked into a study. It's just in my mind, just it is so hard for me to finish. And if you're new to studying and you don't really know where to start, you know, if a, if a word jumps out at you, do the rule of first mention and go find where is the first mention of this in Scripture and how was it used? And then the last mention and see how it was used and just see the Spirit will begin to lead you and show you the connections and the pearls together just just by that one little thing that you begin to implement in your studying time. Amen. Amen. Very good. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch Atad and I Elohenu. Melaka Olam, Eshir Kachiana, Bemizatovitz Ivanu, Lishmoach, Shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh Elohim, King of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the Shofar. <laughs> Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and reserved us and enabled us to reach this time. May it be your will, Yahweh, our Elohim, and the Elohim of our forefathers, that you inaugurate this month upon us for goodness and for blessing. May you give us long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of sustenance, a life of physical health, a life in which there is awe of heaven and hatred of sin a life in which there is no shame or humiliation, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we have a love of Torah, a life in which our heartfelt requests will be fulfilled for the good. He who performed miracles for our forefather and redeemed them from slavery to freedom, he who sent his son to redeem us from the slavery of sin, may he redeem us soon and gather in our dispersed from the four corners of the earth the whole house of Israel becoming brothers, and everyone said, Amen. The Birkat Akonim, the blessing of the priest. Yevarechecha Adonai Veishmerecha Yaer Adonai Panavelecha vihuneka 
Yisadunai panav elecha veyasem lecha lecha shalom. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his favor to you and give you shalom. <laughs>